it's Kelly here, Dev Evangelist at Pinata. Today I'm here to present to you another awesome technical walkthrough. In the next 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to cover the ins and outs of a new NFT standard that is going to shake up the industry. Before we get into it, if you haven't subscribed to the Pinata channel, please do so. We post awesome content on more than IPFS. We actually talk about AI, we talk about different NFT standards and other blockchain concepts. And our CEO Kyle also gives some great insights on the industry as a whole. So please, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. All right, let's get this party started. So today we are talking about ERC6551, a new standard for token bound accounts. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a written overview of the standard, things like what it is, what it's useful for, a rough summary of how it might work and what I see for its future. Since then, there have been multiple hackathons where uh, hackers have been building some pretty cool projects with it. So in this tutorial, to keep things super simple, we're going to deep dive into the technical implementation. This is personally something that I had to study for a long time. Up till now, I have just been playing around with simple, you know, ERC721, 1155 NFTs. So understanding how ERC6551 augments the world of NFTs was a great mental challenge. So in this video, my goal is to really simplify the technical implementation so that you know how parts are meant to move and just exactly where they fit into the picture. Okay, so in a nutshell, ERC 6551s allow NFTs to have their own token bound account. That is, they allow them to have their own smart contract wallet. What does this mean? This means that NFTs can hold assets uh, whether it's, you know, ERC 721s, 1155, or even ERC 20 tokens, they can send other wallets assets as well. So they can essentially act like, you know, the owner of a wallet, uh, just as you and I have browser wallets or hardware wallets, and we can do whatever we want with the assets inside. ERC 6551 allows NFTs to have that same, uh, I guess, uh, layer of identity. So I'm sure by now there's already a gazillion ideas floating around in your mind as to what exactly happens when you give NFTs this power. You know, NFTs that have been such a core part of, I guess, some people's identities um, since the last boom. This diagram that we're looking at right here, um, I pulled this from the official ERC6551 EIP proposal. And this is a layout of how, you know, all the moving parts work. So we're going to focus on two parts here. So for the purposes of really breaking down the underlying tech, we're going to focus on two things. As you can see, we have our EIP 721 contracts. Um, we also have the registry. So we, we're going to focus on the registry and also the implementation accounts. Okay, so firstly is the permissionless registry. What do I mean by a permissionless registry? So I am currently on the official page um, for the Ethereum improvement proposals. And if we scroll down here, that's the diagram I uh, pulled from. We're going to go down to the registry. Um, it is the single entry point. So this is where uh, all token bound accounts, when they're being deployed, they come to the registry first. It has two functions. The first is the create account. The other is the account function. So what is the difference between these two accounts? Well, for starters, um, let's go with the similarities. They both need an implementation address. The only difference is that the create account is the actual uh, function that deploys the TBA, whereas account is a read-only function that uh, simply computes it. So you can't really create an account without computing the token bound account first, but this actually deploys it, whereas this just generates the address uh, with the implementation address uh, passed in. If we go down to the registry interface, um, you can see the very basic interface that they have provided for us. And by they, I mean the um, future primitive team who are the founders of this standard. All right, now moving on to the account interface. So all token brand accounts should be created by the registry. And then all token bound implementations must implement ERC-165 interface detection and the ERC-1271 signature validation. And they also must implement the following interface. So this interface is the account interface. So to put this into perspective, um, you remember how I said we were going to focus on two things. The first was the uh, registry interface. 
Now the registry is what creates the token bound account, as in it generates the address and then deploys it. Now the account interface is, I guess the instruction manual for how this token bound account should behave. There are a couple of functions that you should understand. Uh, the first is this receive function. Um, this uh, means that you're allowed to receive, for example, ERC20s or ERC721 tokens. Now that is crucial in order for your token bound account to be alive. And the second is the execute call function. This means that you can send assets from your TBA. And then this function here, function uh, which is called token, it returns the identifier of the ERC721 token to which this um, account is bound to. And then lastly is the function owner. Um, this basically returns the owner of the account, which is the owner of the ERC721 token of which this TBA is bound to. It's possible that you're extremely confused right now because there was a lot there, but don't worry once um, I get into, but do not fret. I was like that for a few days. And once I get into actually showing you how all these parts move together and interact, you're going to be in very good hands. Okay, so starting with tooling, what tools do we need in order to successfully complete this tutorial? Well, we don't need much. Uh, I realized that the easiest way to kind of show how TBAs work is to do it all from one place. You know, um, you don't have to import in testnet funds or anything. So I'm going to be using Remix, which is um, an Ethereum specialized IDE. And we'll be pulling in different contracts from Open Zeppelin, but they're actually already in there. So uh, the first thing you'll have to do is just go to uh, Remix and I think that URL is something like remix.ethereum.org and create an account if you don't already have it. Um, you'll be probably landing on this page. It looks something like this. You've got a file explorer and then the uh, main homepage. What you're going to do is you're going to go over to clone. And then what you're going to do is go over to this GitHub repo, grab the HTTPS uh, URL from uh, the repo that I will link in the description. I already have everything set up for you so that you don't have to copy and paste or do anything um, to get started. And you're going to clone it into your Remix IDE editor and then it should all be good to go. Okay, once that's loaded, this is what you should see. So you should see um, my readme. You should see a folder called contracts. This is um, mainly where we'll be working. You'll also see a folder called scripts. Um, you won't have to worry too much about that. And you won't have to worry too much about tests either. So we're going to concentrate on the contracts folder. Inside the root of the contracts folder, I have um, the contract for the ERC6551 account and the registry. Whoops. Uh, I'll also have a simple contract for an ERC721 called my NFT. Um, I have a folder called interfaces, and this is where I put both of the interfaces, uh, like copy and pasted from the official EIP proposal page. And then inside lib, I have a few other bits and bobs that you'll need um, in order for everything to compile and work uh, smoothly. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to NFT Sol. All right, let's get started. And just before I started the screen share yet, what I did was I changed my compiler to 0.8.19. Um, otherwise, I think there um, will be some issues that you'll run into. So I highly recommend doing that first. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go into the myNFT.sol contract. And this is a very basic uh, implementation of an ERC721 token. Um, it is, the constructor is myNFT. In, and it just basically creates an ERC721. Here, okay, we're going to go ahead and compile. And we're going to go ahead and let's just make sure everything's right. Okay, make sure that you're on the contract here. And we're going <clears> to <throat> deploy this contract. All right, so now that that contract is deployed, we're going to go ahead and mint a couple of NFTs. So we're going to go and save mint. So from this current address, this is where we deployed this contract from. We're going to just select a random address. You can save mint this address. Let's put it as token ID one and transact. 
Cool. So now this address here has one NFT from this contract. And if we go ahead and just select the next one, copy that address, go back to our original address, and we're going to safe mint another token called token ID2. I'm going to transact another one. Awesome. And so if you see, let's just check the owner of token ID1. It should be that first address that we uh, minted the NFT to. Oh, AB84. Okay, cool. And then token ID2. 787. Okay, I guess I selected that one. That's all good. I just need to remember that. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and deploy the registry contract. Remember, this is the place that deploys the TBA and creates the contract address. So we're gonna go and compile that. Deploy, make sure you're in the right contract. Cool, so that's deployed at this address. I'm gonna go back into the account contract, compile, and then we're going to deploy this. All right, so we should have three deployed contracts. We should have the account registry and also the ERC721 um, NFT that we just um, minted to two different addresses. All right, so now that we have all three contracts deployed, uh, the first one we're gonna play around with is this one right here, which is the registry uh, contract. So remember how I said that this is the single point of entry when it comes to creating a token bound account. What we're gonna do is we're going to um, uh, compute a token bound account address and then we're going to deploy it with the create account function. So uh, what we're going to do that with is this address right here. So let's just copy that NFT address. Let us go and oh, just paste that um, NFT token in and for the implementation address we're going to use this account implementation that we just deployed. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste that here chain ID one, token ID, we're also gonna put as one. So we're playing with the first NFT that we minted. And then for salts, we're just going to put zero. Cool, and then call that. If you see here, I'm just gonna expand this. The decoded output was this address. So this is the address that will be um, of our token bound account. So if you go back and we deploy, we actually create the account. So remember that this simply computes the account address, whereas the create account function actually deploys it. So we're gonna go salt and let's just put an empty array in here. I'm gonna pop in transact. So let's double check this account. It should be the same as what was computed before. Okay, now that we have this um, implementation address computed, I'm just gonna go and copy that. You're gonna make sure you're in your account contract. And instead of um, deploying from here, we're gonna add the contract from address. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna compute our actual smart contract address for this NFT contract right here. So what you can do is you can just click add address and you should have con uh, created another contract right here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. So you should just be left with these two contracts. Now, how can you verify that this account here belongs to this um, NFT with the token ID one? Well, what you can do is you can go to the owner and it should be the owner of um, the NFT that we minted with the token ID one uh, right here. So let's see the owner, when we call the owner function on this new account, we have, um, 0xab8 and if we just check here the account that we minted the first nft to is this one here 0xab8 and similarly if you go to hmm, let's go token id2 uh, sorry one it should be the same cool so now um, we can surmise that the owner of token ID one in this NFT contract is also the person who controls this um, token bound account, the smart contract account. All right, so let's go ahead and add some money to this. So we're gonna go and make sure we're, uh, we're here, uh, make sure we're on the contract address and we're gonna go ahead and 
maybe put in 10 ETH. On this account here, we're going to try to um, execute a call, which is send some shmoney to another address. So let's send it to, let's send it to this one, uh, the one that has token ID too. I'm gonna copy that, go back to the um, account address that owns this smart contract account, and we're gonna put in, one, two, Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Sweet. And let's just put in an empty array, and we can transact that. It should be successful. So now we have nine ETH. Now, if we switch and just pick like a random account, maybe uh, let's pick this one. and we try that again, it should not work. And there we have it. We have successfully created a token bound account for the owner of um, the NFT with the token ID one from this NFT ERC721 contract. They now have the power to send, receive assets to the smart contract. And yeah, there we go. I hope that was useful in figuring out just exactly how token bound account works and what you can do with them.